people have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition. Civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect. Hello viewers, I'm your host Lipakshi Kurana with another episode of South Asia Focus. Let's begin the show. India and Sri Lanka took a significant step forward in enhancing their trade, cultural and strategic connections during Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe's two-day visit to India. Colombo has chosen to strengthen its ties by designating the Indian currency as its foreign currency. Additionally, the adoption of India's UPI model will help streamline the payment system in Sri Lanka. These two nations have been prominent allies in South Asia, fostering a strong bond through frequent visits and collaborative endeavors in areas such as energy and security. Sri Lankan President Ranil Vikramasinghe visited India for the first time since assuming office after Gotabaya Rajapakse's departure due to economic crisis-related protests in Sri Lanka. The visit followed President Vikramasinghe's recent statement affirming that he would not permit his country's land or water to be utilized against India. During the visit, both nations signed several agreements covering areas such as culture, communication, tourism, connectivity, security and currency. Additionally, they reached mutual understandings on various matters. We have said that the both countries have to connect the electricity grids to the work of तेजी से आगे बढ़ाया जाएगा भारत और श्रीलंका के बीच पेट्रोलियम पाइपलाइन के लिए फिजिबिलिटी स्टडी की जाएगी इसके अलावा एक लैंड ब्रिज की फिजिबिलिटी को भी जांचने का निर्णय लिया गया आज श्रीलंका में यूपीआई को लॉन्च करने के लिए हुए समझौते से फिनटेक कनेक्टिविटी भी बढ़ेगी In what could be referred to as one of the biggest victories of the Digital India campaign, Sri Lanka will now be using UPI based system to settle transactions in the country. India and Sri Lanka will also focus on grid connectivity between the two countries, port development and renewable energy projects, largely in the northern parts of the island. Last year, India gave aid worth almost four billion dollars, including currency support, deferred payment of loans and lines of credit for emergency purchases of food, fuel, and medicines to Sri Lanka. During a joint press conference, the Sri Lankan president thanked PM Modi for the support rendered by India during Sri Lankan's recent economic crisis. I have conveyed to Prime Minister Modi and to the government and the people of India a profound appreciation for the solidarity and support rendered to Sri Lanka in what was undoubtedly the most challenging period in our modern history. India and Sri Lanka share a long-standing and multifaceted relationship deeply rooted in historical, cultural and economic ties. Geographical proximity has fostered extensive people-to-people -people contact and cultural exchanges. Bilateral trade and investment have steadily increased, with India being one of Sri Lanka's significant trading partners. Both nations collaborate closely on regional and international forums, promoting stability and prosperity in South Asia. However, occasional challenges, particularly concerning issues like fishing rights in the Park Strait, have arisen. But both countries have consistently worked to address these matters amicably through dialogue and diplomacy. Overall, India and Sri Lanka's relationship reflects a strong commitment to mutual respect, cooperation and shared interests. 
Moving on, the historical ties between India and Nepal have fostered a strong bond characterized by thriving trade, cultural exchange and deep-rooted connections between their people. In recent years, this relationship has been revitalized with India playing a pivotal role in enhancing Nepal's energy capacity and connectivity. The acts of goodwill like one witnessed recently, the donation of ambulances and buses exemplify the strengthening of ties between the two nations. The government of India last Sunday gifted 43 ambulances and 50 school buses to Nepal under the Nepal-India Development Partnership Program. Amid a ceremony held in the embassy premises, Nepal's Minister for Science, Education and Technology handed over the keys to beneficiary organizations in presence of Indian Ambassador to Nepal. Addressing the event, Minister Ashok Rai thanked the Indian government for vacular support stating it would facilitate students during their studies. <laughs> खोलियो तीन और लाय ऑयले हैं मिले चाहिए मैपिंग करेगा मर्जर में लाने प्रक्रिया मिले शुरू करेगा जो जिसले गर्दा पनी मर्जर में गई शक्के पीछे दुई बार दुई बंदा बड़ी विद्यालय हरो मिली शक्के पची एक ठाउं में भाई पची दूरी अली गति बढ़ना गाय कोच विद्यालय पूर्ण नहीं बच्चा हरो लाय विद्या� विद्यालय हरुलाई यातायात को शादन बहुत हरु को चाहिए आवश्यकता आली का ना बढ़े रा गाय को आवश्यकता सा तेज को प्रतिबिंब हो बहुत को मार्ट चाहिए आली का ना बढ़े रा गाय को सा र आगामी दिन में पनी भारत सरकार को ये शहयोग हमें ले ये दुतावास मार्फत निरंतर प्राप्त गरीब रहने चाहूं र शिक्षा रस्ता स्� नेपाली जनता लाभान्वित भाई रहने चाहिए मन्ने में ले विश्वास लिए कुछ और फिर ही एक पक्का। Since the Nepal-India Development Partnership Program came into force in 1994, India has been continuously providing Nepal a support of one kind or the other. Since then, India has gifted a total of 974 ambulances and 234 school buses. India has always maintained that Nepal is one of the closest allies of India. Announcing continued support in health and education sector, the Indian ambassador to Nepal, Naveen Srivastava, promised to raise the number of school buses in the days to come. The mapping of the schools is being used with the schools. We are also seeing that the demand of school buses डिमांड है जो चाहना है वे बढ़ गई है और इसी को देखते हुए पिछले वर्ष भी और इस वर्ष भी और आगे के वर्षों में भी स्कूल बसों की तादाद एम्बुलेंस के बजाय ज़्यादा होगी हमें भारतीय दूतावास को भारतीय सरकार को नेपाल में अपने मित्र अपने सहयोगी भाई बहनों के साथ मिलकर काम करने के लिए और उनके विकास के लिए जो भी कार्य कर सकेंगे उसमें हम प्रतिबद्ध रहते हैं। The relationship between India and Nepal dates back centuries, rooted in shared historical, cultural and religious ties. Over the decades, trade between India and Nepal has flourished, with both countries benefiting from the exchange of goods and services. India has been actively supporting Nepal in its quest to enhance its energy capacity, recognizing the significance of a stable and robust power supply for the nation's economic growth. Several joint projects have been undertaken aimed at improving Nepal's energy infrastructure and harnessing its vast hydropower potential. Such collaborative efforts have not only strengthened the energy security of Nepal, but have also reinforced the spirit of cooperation between the two neighboring nations. Connectivity has also been a crucial focus of India-Nepal relations. The improvement of transport links and cross-border connectivity has been pivotal in enhancing regional integration and promoting economic prosperity. 
Various infrastructure projects such as roadways and border checkpoints have been initiated to facilitate smoother movement of goods and people. And Pakistan, a country plagued by escalating violence and insecurity, finds itself teetering on the edge of chaos. The recent tragic attack in Peshawar, which killed and wounded innocents, serves as a grim reminder of the growing dangers within its borders. While the nation grapples with the aftermath, questions arise about its role in cultivating extremism and terrorism. Pakistan is already accused of serving as a sanctuary for the world's most feared militants, including 2611 mastermind Hafiz Saeed and Sajid Mir. Last week, a suicide bombing near a paramilitary truck in Peshawar left two persons dead, eight others injured. Tehreek-e-Jihad Pakistan, a recently formed jihadist organization, claimed responsibility for the explosion. Since revoking a ceasefire agreement with the government in late 2022, jihadist militants have increased their attacks, including the bombing of a mosque in the northwest city of Peshawar earlier this year that left over 100 people dead. Frontier Corps Apparently, we have assessed this as a VBID. We have investigated this as an investigation. We have investigated this as a counterterrorism department, we have investigated this as a police and we have investigated this as a support. We have different angles. The recent deadly attack in Peshawar, claiming the lives of two innocent individuals, has cast a dark shadow over Pakistan's security landscape raising alarm bells among its citizens and the international community. As the nation faces growing concerns over internal radicalization and terrorism, Pakistan finds itself at a critical juncture, grappling with the consequences of nurturing extremism within its border for decades. The attack in Peshawar serves as a stark testament to the escalating insecurity plaguing the country. The nation's long-standing history of harboring radicals and terrorists in its own backyard has come under renewed scrutiny, challenging the very foundations of its security apparatus. This incident, there are six people who are in the Frontier Corps who have been shifted to the hospital. They have been shifted to the hospital. They have been shifted to the hospital. Experts warn that Pakistan's complex geopolitical dynamics and its status has a safe haven for some of the world's most dreaded global terrorists demand urgent and comprehensive action. Pakistan's deep state of army, which rules the roost in the country, is accused of working overtime to prepare terrorists who serve as assets to it in order to launch terror attacks in neighboring India and Afghanistan. However, not every time Pakistan has reaped the favorable dividends. Sometimes, its endeavors have proven counterproductive. The country has lost several of its citizens to terror turncoats. The situation is increasingly growing grim in Pakistan, and the international community is closely observing Islamabad's response to this critical issue. Diplomatic pressure is mounting for Pakistan to demonstrate its commitment to eradicating terrorism from its soil and to ensure that its territory is not misused by violent non-state actors with transnational ambitions. As Pakistan navigates the treacherous path towards stability and peace, its citizens hold their breath, yearning for a brighter and a safer future. And time now for Asia This Week, the stories from across the continent. Many Thais expressed anger and disappointment after Pita Limjaronrat, the leader of winning Move Forward Party and sole prime minister candidate of an eight-party alliance, encountered a complete blockade this week on his path to becoming the country's premier. เดี๋ยวฟังรู้สึกครับมันยังไงโดนกลั่นแกล้งทุกอย่างอย่างนี้ทาเป็นนายกเศรษฐกิจจะได้ดีทุกวันนี้เศรษฐกิจก็แย่
Next week, it is widely expected that real estate tycoon and political newcomer Shweta Thavisen from the runner-up Few Thai Party, part of Pita's alliance, will be nominated for premier. Parliament's move to deny Pita Limjaron Rath after a marathon debate on his eligibility triggered street protests as a post-election crisis deepens two months after his party trounced military-backed rivals in an election. Japan is set to start releasing more than 1 million tons of treated water from the wrecked Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant this summer after having received approval from the International Atomic Energy Agency. The plan has caused alarm among neighboring countries and local fishermen, with China emerging as the most vocal of those critics, saying the plan would endanger the environment and human lives. Despite the concerns, a comprehensive review of the plan by the United Nations nuclear watchdog has said that the impact would be negligible and that the discharge would be in accordance with international standards. The water was mainly used to cool reactors in the aftermath of the 2011 tsunami and subsequent nuclear disaster. It is enough to fill about 500 Olympic-sized swimming pools and is being stored in huge tanks at the plant. Syria has begun restoring the historic citadel and markets in the old city of Aleppo, damaged during the devastating earthquakes in February. The restoration project's goal is to preserve the Aleppo's cultural heritage and revive the damaged sites in the old part of the city, which have also suffered throughout the civil war. Local professionals from the Syrian Trust for Development, in cooperation with the General Directorate of Antiquities, lead the project. In the old markets of Aleppo, already damaged during the battles that took place between government troops and opposition forces, the earthquake exacerbated the destruction. The citadel of Aleppo is one of the most important archaeological sites in Syria affected by the earthquakes that struck on February 6, and it was closed after race posed by the main entrance to visitors. Fans from around the world gather around a statue of martial arts legend Bruce Lee in Hong Kong on July 20th to mark the 50th anniversary of the Kung Fu star's death. Passionate fans could be seen practicing Lee's signature nunchucks and Jeet Kune Do moves in front of the statue which sits on Hong Kong's Avenue of Stars with the iconic Victoria Harbour skyline just behind it. Bruce Lee, who was born in America but raised in Hong Kong, passed away at the age of 32 due to brain swelling. Just days before the release of his famous film, Enter the Dragon in 1973. While well, India, a land of diversity, showcases its vibrant culture through captivating art and crafts. One such example is Lambani embroidery, known for its colorful threads and ornamental accessories. Recently, this craft achieved a Guinea's world record during India's presidency of the G20's third culture working group meeting. Join us as we explore this fascinating handicraft. An intricate embellishment of multicolored threadworks characterized by small, ornamental mirrors along with patchwork is quintessential to Lambani women's attire. Lambada embroidery also known as Lambani or Sandu Lambani embroidery is often practiced by the Banjara tribes of Bellari and Bijapur in Karnataka and Hyderabad in Andhra Pradesh. It is also believed that the Lambani tribe, which has spread itself across Karnataka and other states, were once nomadic tribes that all the way came from Afghanistan to Rajasthan and then to other parts of the country ages ago. The community has garnered much appreciation due to its exotic piece of embroidery work in India and now the Lambani embroidered textiles are leaving an impression at the global level also. 
the recent Guinness World Record for the largest display of Lambani items during the third culture working group meeting of the G20 in Hampi mesmerized the guests. हमारे काम वो बहुत काम रहते महीने रहते पंद्रह दिन होते आठ दिन में छोटा काम रिया तो आठ दिन में करते ये करिया तो एक वर्ष जाना हमारे को ये होता वो एक वर्ष हाँ बार महीना होता ड्रेस बनाना का तो ये बनाया तो एक का पंद्रह दिन में बनाते हैं the handicraft is not just a source of income for the Lambani tribes, but a reflection of their emotional associations and the passion for vibrant colors. Apart from adding details like colorful thread patterns, mirror works, metal beads, coins or cori to embroider the pieces of fabrics, the community also invests in creating other wonderful items such as bed sheets, cushion covers, bags, wall hangings, mobile phone covers and even styled ready to wear garments the visitors were hooked to these exotic and vivid handmade designs during the program ye logon ko saadi pe kaisa kaam karna dupatte pe kaisa kaam karna ya blouse pe kaisa kaam karna aur shehar mein jo log cushion cover wagera use karte hain aur ladies log bag use karte hain purse use karte hain unke liye inko kaisa एम्ब्रॉयडरी करना चाहिए और कौन कौन सा कलर पसंद है ये सब उनको मैंने समझा समझाया फिर इनके गांव में मैं पंद्रह दिन रहा फिर रह के इनको पूरा जानकारी दी उनको पूरा ट्रेनिंग दी फिर उसके बाद स्लोली धीरे 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 उनके पूरा मन में समझ में आया कि कि हम लोग ऐसा करना चाहिए ऐसा मैंने उनको फुल ट्रेन देती हूँ to enhance their skills and revive the traditional craftsmanship of the community and ensure a steady income for them kushal kala kendra is constantly working and promoting their aesthetics around 600 artisans are skillfully stitching together small pieces of discarded fabric to create a beautiful lambani craft daily mai unko kaise समझाती हूँ और वीकली एक टाइम बीस बीस लोगों के बीच में एक सुपरवाइजर रहती है यहाँ पे और उनको पूरा मैं समझा के फिर गांव में आके उन लोग आर्टिजन को समझाते हैं कि ऐसा करना है ये इतना दिन में करना है ये ऑर्डर का है या हम अपना मार्केट का है सब समझा के उसके बाद यहाँ लाते हैं बंडल धागा मिरर मार्किंग के साथ बंडल बांध के इन लोगों को हम देते हैं encapsulating the essence of vasudev kutumbakam demonstrating a testament to the power of unity in diversity and harmonious coexistence among different cultures the display program was led under its culture unites all campaign as a part of syndicated effort 450 lambani artisans and other cultural practitioners came together to create 1755 unique embroidery patches marking their highest ever while making a Guinness world record the rich embroidery tradition of the lambani community is anticipated to bring numerous business opportunities from across the world ek group se ek hamare liye ek bahut bada mauka tha aur hamare jo community hai lambani jo behan log jo kaam karte jo ladies kaam karte unke liye ek naya avsar mila तो हमको बहुत खुशी हो रही है कि हम लोगों ने कल जी ट्वेंटी के जो सी डब्ल्यू जी हम्पी में जो हुआ उसमें हम लोगों ने वो वर्ल्ड रिकॉर्ड को अकम्पलिश किया और होपफुली इससे ग्लोबल में हमारा नाम बढ़ेगा भारत का नाम बढ़ेगा हमारा संडूर कला केंद्र का नाम बढ़ेगा तो हमको अच्छा मौका मिलेगा The craftsmanship of the colorful Lambani community is my glimpse of India's rich tradition and cultural creativity. However, there are multiple examples of such art pieces that would leave you awestruck at first glance. Well, India is home to a number of such arts. With that, we come to the end of this week's episode. See you next week. Goodbye and take care. People have to live in, in unity. We are still in transition.
civil society has been decimated. Of course we rely on media. And I think the government has not done enough. The international community has failed to respond. No place in the world is perfect.